Hello and welcome to the game highlights for game four in the Google DeepMind Challenge. Today, Lee Sedol was looking for the weakness in AlphaGo, which he had not been able to find in the first three games. Today, he found it. Michael, show us how. Yeah, well, well shall we begin with the Absolutely. game? Absolutely. Yes. Um, start point. AlphaGo is black. Yes. And at this point, it's exactly the same opening as it played um, in the second game. And at this point, Lee said, oh, change tactics. In the, in the second game, mm -hmm. he played here, and AlphaGo actually left that. So this was actually a kind of a surprise, because just about everyone was expecting AlphaGo to be sort of orthodox in its opening. Mm. And so when, uh, in that game, uh, AlphaGo left it and played on, the, on this side here. Uh, so Lee Siddell apparently didn't like that, and so he changed his move here. Um, top players also, hum people tend to like to um, change their moves mm -hmm. um, just to avoid the same game, for one thing. Okay. Um, and maybe he thought that it was important for him to keep uh, Alf uh, AlphaGo on the defensive a little bit because this sort of threatens to attack these stones. So Black is sort of needs to play that extension. Um, and gives Lee Settle the chance to play the Kakari. Very common position here. Um, locally, there's a lot of moves that White can choose from. Um, basically, um, any move uh, directly protecting this one stone will allow Black to play towards the right side here and make a framework here while letting White live. That would be also a Joseki, but um, since Black does have this weak stone here, it sort of makes sense for White to switch to the side here and allow Black to take the corner and create a white, uh, weak Black root. And now Black played once here. This is really big in mm -hmm. uh, helping Black's framework. And White played the final, you could call that the final big point or the final Oba. And then what? Uh, this is an interesting player. move. Interesting move. It's not unheard of. It's a move that have, has been played before. And there, after, if White had played here, Black would have been satisfied mm -hmm. to play forcing moves from outside, sort of forcing White to put, put a lot of stones in that corner. So this was the plan. So White says, no, you can't do that. Now Black's aim is to try to get some margin in the corner. Like there's moves like this, which can cause some trouble in the corner. But it's interesting that before Black does that, AlphaGo plays once here mm -hmm. in an attempt to sort of erase the side first and then go back there later. And I don't really know why. I, I think Lee Settle might have been worried that at this, um, at this point in time, now AlphaGo would be trying something in the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm not really clear as to how that would turn out. But um, normally I think White should have been playing one push at least. Mm -hmm. And hopefully if Black plays here, then it would be a different story when White plays here. There would be more, more space for this White. Sure. And the actual game White played here immediately. And this does sort of make White a bit cramped. So this is something that I didn't really like for yeah, White. I noticed. And I thought it was a bit difficult. In this fight, uh, both the Black group and the White group are actually weak groups. And if you look at the positions on the side, we can see that it looks like, for instance, if white plays here, if we mm -hmm. just look at this position, black's group is the weaker one. But there is the fact that now it's black's move. So black gets to, say, play the, the key move here. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a vital point in white's shape. And so because of that, the strength of the two groups is maybe about the same. There's also the fact that if black can curl around on the top here, there's going to be a big moyo in this area. Okay. So white decided to play the safe move. We can see AlphaGo playing very aggressively here, pushing and just closing off the center um, and then connecting. This is sort of a vital point in white's shape. With this move, white has a living shape. And so far, white has taken territory here, 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 and a framework here, which is not really so big. Mm -hmm. uh, black, this is not really territory. Black has territory in the corner maybe here and then this framework. So what happens to this framework is really important in this game. It's White's turn. White played here. And so White started by invading the side here. 
but decided that it was a bit heavy to actually be moving out with these stones, so he played a very light move here. This is sort of moving out, not really trying to save all of the stones, but also looking at the cut here. Mm -hmm. And this cut came later in the game, but this is always something that White is sort of hoping to play at some point. Okay. There. This is similar mm -hmm. uh, to the magic move in game two, Game I think two, it was. 37. Yeah. Although yeah. that, of course, was... This is more uh, of a normal shoulder hit, right? It's a more normal sh shoulder hit. In this case, actually, Black is trying to sort of cover up on the top and surround these stones, on depending on how White handles it. So in that way, it's, it also rem resembles a move that uh, Lee Settle played in game number three, mm -hmm. in which case he was attaching against a White structure um, in the lower right, actually, um, in an attempt to attack White's center group. So it's a, and this, this is basically an attack... Uh, oblique attack against white stones here. And instead of trying to take territory over the side, which would sort of, sort of um, fall into black's trap, white does have to push through here and try to make a connection with these two mm -hmm. groups. Again, just like here, AlphaGo is playing very strongly. It's a, quite a similar shape, actually. Um, at this point, white does have a kind of a connection. If White had, for instance, played something like this, yeah, this it would have been much more peaceful. Um, Black would probably just take the just one stone. Time. And Black would have some thickness towards here, <coughs> would still have the Torner territory in this territory, and would later have a move here to cut this off. So White would <coughs> need to put one more stone in, for instance, here. Um, and the, this, the kind of clumsy shape here is what Lee Settle didn't like. I see. Because he also has a weak point here. So the whole group here... Um, although it's connected and saved now, it's still not a very happy shape. So, mm -hmm. the, and, and the fact that black is thick here it means that black's going to get some extra points in the center. Right. So that's why Lee Settle just didn't like that, I suppose. Okay. And since the ladder is good for white, so he ex escaped here. Mm -hmm. The drawback is that this move is um, attacking white here. It turns into a kind of a trade. Now, at this point, you were feeling uh, pretty good for AlphaGo, for Alpha Go, right? Um, I, mean, I think AlphaGo should have a lead at this point. Um, and it all depends on how much White can get out of the Aji here, because there's a lot of Aji, or potential, especially for this stone. And this stone, and the, the weakness in the cut and the Hana here, I'm just putting a lot of stones down. This, this really puts these sure. stones into... So there's a lot of, uh, there's a little bit of potential here. Um, and even professionals when playing will not re be re really sure whether this stone is completely dead or not. Okay. But for the time being, uh, covering here is a very strong move for black. White can't really allow that to happen. Right. So white had to put, put a stone in here. Black played here. This is uh, large scale. Now if this move happened to be, it turned out that white managed to destroy this black center territory with a brilliant sequence. Mm -hmm. um, and if that is true, if that, um, if that worked actually, maybe Black should have been a bit right. more cautious right. here. This would be maybe a bit over cautious, but at least something like this to avoid that kind of thing. I see. But um, my um, theory here is that the moves that Lee Siddle did to break up this center, they took me by surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if they were sort of outside the, um, the tree of uh, variations that AlphaGo was creating because it was a brilliant sequence. Which is really amazing, though, because, and, and we'll see this shortly, but, I mean, AlphaGo performed virtually flawlessly in the first three games. Yes, and, and in this game also, I think AlphaGo is playing a good game. Okay. Yes. Okay. So suddenly, well, the moment Lee said all sort of... Um, it's a pretty standard move. This is right? normal. This is yeah, normal. black plate here. Special here. This is another of, well, there's a choice here between this move and this move. Um, they both have their drawbacks. Um, the whole place, the situation here, this black group has some damismari, right. a lack of liberties. Right. There's weak points in black all over the place. So it is a kind of a worrying situation, however black plays. Um, black. This looked like it was a safe move to Absolutely. me when, when Black played it. Mm -hmm. And Black, White cuts here. Again, uh, playing Atari and allowing White to get some stones lined up here would set up this move. Right. And that would be a disaster, disaster for Black. Yeah, it collapses. So Coming this side would allow this to be Sente, and White would be, again, 
would be able to use this right. kind of Aji to run out with a right. fairly good shape. And that would put these stones in trouble. So this is the move that comes it's to mind. It's a really nice it's move, a nice right? move. Now white plays here. And this is, this is forcing white. Black has to answer this. And in order to make this cut work, white really needs, he needs this move. This is a forcing move that obviously will work. It, it, white, black's going to answer it. White needs this forcing move. Um, and it still doesn't work because white cuts, black comes out here, and black can come here to capture the two stones. Right. So white needs one more forcing move here. Right. Now, if we do this in order, it's just not going to work um, because uh, white, black can answer the final forcing move with this, um, this move. Right. And um, white cannot get out here. It just doesn't work. Um, so the move that Lee said old played was just brilliant. And it was, um, he wouldn't have been playing this way to start with if he hadn't uh, been sort of feeling the potential for this move already. I don't know if he had it completely read out or maybe just was sort of smelling something that happened. Um, and he, he, he was very modest about it. In the press conference. In the press conference. But um, all of this stuff he's doing would be sort of meaningless if he hadn't had something like this in mind when he did. This was a brilliant move. I think it got a wow out of me while I was <laughs> doing the commentary. It did. Um, basically, it's ask, if black plays here, um, it means that white will get that extra forcing move here. Um, and this would set up the capture here of the two black stones. Not That's really paying very much for it. Right. Capturing these two, two stones would give white a victory. Um, in actuality, black played here. Uh, white pushed through here, black covered. And white cut. Now at this point, it's still not clear what's going to happen. Mm. If black takes the one stone, white can force with this. Okay. And force with this. And again, white's got the three forcing moves that he needed. So white can cut here. Uh, and capture the two stones. Right. 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 So it's, it's these three points that white needs to make this cut work. So that's that's relatively simple. Um, in the actual game, AlphaGo stopped playing in this vicinity at this point. Now the move that I was looking at was this one. And if white plays here, it's not going to work uh, because white cannot capture this stone and right. ladder. So this looks bad for white. But there is potential on this side. For instance, if white plays here and black plays here, white can push through here. Black covers, white cuts. And now white plays here. After this, the throw in here, which kills these stones, connect, and right. the cut there. Well, right. well, they're, yeah, they're well this is bad it. too. Yeah. Right. So this would capture these stones here. Very nice. So this that would too. be a disaster. Um, I'm not really clear what happens if black plays this move on this side in which case it doesn't really seem to work. Um, <laughs> but in actuality, AlphaGo apparently decided that it didn't work uh, to, to play here. And so AlphaGo started doing stuff like this. Which is... And, and just didn't work. Just doesn't work, right? And after this, actually, the game sort of deteriorated for AlphaGo because AlphaGo was just doing all sorts of things that did not work and now took here. Yeah, it took, yeah. right. And, and then played down here. And White just took... Black played the key point, but Black was already losing the semi here. This whole sequence, it didn't, um, Black gained some back on here, but it increased White's territory here, really uh, wasted the Black potential there. And in the center again, this point, and cutting off the two stones is Mi. Mm. So at this point, the game is already looking good for White. It's an amazing turnaround for Lee mm -hmm. at all, who had, you know, basically, we, we had counted, we had counted, you know, oh, 80, 80, 90, 100 points. Without anything like this, the game would have been hopeless for right. White. And this was really a brilliant move that was led up to by a sequence here in which Lee Sedo was certainly um, sensing something there in the middle of Black's territory. Well, thank you.
for, it was, it was a long, it seemed like a really long commentary. Again, another long, complicated game. Yes. Uh, thanks for leading us through it. Uh, congratulations to Lisa Dahl for finally finding uh, a weakness uh, in a program that up until now has been uh, it seemed virtually invincible. seemed yeah. invincible, but it's got a bit of a bit of a flaw. So uh, we will look forward to Game Five, uh, the final game, uh, with great anticipation. Uh, thank you again, Michael. Thank you.